If your skin tones are off even just a little, your entire image suffers. Too red, too green, just flat and lifeless. I've been there. What if I told you there's a way to nail perfect skin tones every single time without second guessing every adjustment? I'll break down my exact process for dialing in perfect skin tones. And to make it even easier, I'll show you a tool I built that takes the guesswork out of the process. Here's how it works. So what exactly are perfect skin tones? Well, it depends. Different films and commercials suggest skin tones to match the mood, lighting, and overall style. But even with all that variation, there's still a baseline the professional colors stick to. Let's take a look at some professionally graded scenes to see how different approaches to skin tones work in real world projects. So in Dior's campaign, Jenna Ortega's skin has a soft warmth with a high-end polished feel. That was graded by Joseph Bicknell, who also happens to be one of my favorite colors. In Beef, Ali Wong's skin tones lean more towards a natural and warm tone, giving it that cinematic, true-to-life look. This one was graded by Joshua Risk. And for the last black man in San Francisco, Jimmy Fail's skin has a rich golden depth that enhances darker tones while keeping a natural contrast. This was graded by Damien Vanderkruzen. I'm so sorry if I'm not saying your names right, but I wanna make sure that everybody gets credit for their work. Then we have Zendaya in Challengers, where Claudia Lil Bravo's grade creates a creamy polished look with smooth highlight roll-ups. And finally, Dunkirk, where Fionn Whitehead's skin tones are cool and desaturated, yet they still feel natural and grounded. That was graded by Walter Volpato. Now each of these films takes a different approach to skin tones, influenced by lighting, mood, and overall color design. Now before we talk about my skin tone indicator plugin, let me show you how I usually adjust skin tones in DaVinci Resolve. So the first method and most commonly used in the past was to isolate the skin using a power window or the qualifier and check if it aligns with the skin tone line in the vector scope. An easy way to get started is to go up to your colors tab at the top Go to presets and select six vector red. Now, when we compare this to what color slice does, you can tell that it gets pretty close, but it also selects your lips. And if you have other red color things in your image, those will also be selected. Rather than relying only on Resolve's HSL qualifier, which can be inconsistent, I use color slice to refine skin hues more naturally. And you can also visually tell it's much more accurate. For final tweaks, I subtly adjust using the offset wheels and the color slice sliders. This keeps skin tones more natural and prevents overcorrection. Now, even with these steps, I have found myself constantly double checking values and not knowing whether my skin tones are too warm, too cool, too red, too green, or if they're perfect. That's why I created the Skin Tone Indicator plugin, a visual tool that makes this process faster, easier, and more precise. All right, let's break down how this plugin works and why it makes styling skin tones so much easier. First, it overlays false colors on skin so you can instantly see where your hues are landing. Here's what those colors mean. Yellow means you're in the ideal skin tone range. This is where you want to be. Magenta means the skin tone is too red, which can make it look oversaturated or unnatural. Green means it's too cool, often given that sickly or off balance look. Then there's a saturation warning system, which helps you spot if your skin tones are either too strong or too flat. Now the colors here, red, means the skin tone is too desaturated, dull, and lifeless. Blue means it's oversaturated, think artificial neon looking skin. Green means you're in the sweet spot with perfect skin saturation. It also has a neutral highlighter feature that flags any subtle color casts by detecting areas where red, green, and blue are nearly equal, helping you correct unwanted shifts and knowing where your true blacks are. And finally, there's the bypass button, which lets you toggle the plugin on and off easily so you can quickly compare your adjustments and see the difference in real time. Now let's put it to practice. Let's fix this shot in seconds using the skin tone indicator plugin. First, I enable false colors. Immediately, I can see that the skin leans too red. A quick adjustment in the color slice tool and the offset wheels moves it back into the yellow range. Next, I check saturation. The plugin warns me that the skin is too saturated because of how dark it is and the lighting in the space. So I go to the color slice tool and in the skin tab, I turn down the saturation until the saturation warning turns green and his skin tone. Finally, I use the bypass button to compare before and after. And there you go, perfect skin tones in under two minutes. So what's the science behind the tool and why does the plugin work so well? It's all based on HSV color space, where hue, saturation, and brightness are separated. This allows for more precise color 
color detection, making skin tone adjustments way more intuitive. Now, when we talk about skin tones, they typically fall within a 20 to 40 degree range on the vector scope. Lighter skin tones tend to sit between 20 to 30 degrees, while darker skin tones fall between 30 to 40 degrees. But here's the key, the plugin targets Hue 32, which is a happy medium for most skin tones. And here's why that matters. It balances warmth and coolness. 32 degrees sits right in the center of the orange spectrum, preventing skin tones from looking too red or too yellow. It aligns with the skin tone line on the vector scope. This ensures a natural look no matter the lighting conditions. It works across different complexions, whether the subject has fair, medium, or darker skin. These act as a reliable reference point. So how do you actually visualize this in DaVinci Resolve? It's super simple. Open up the vector scope, check the three dot menu in the vector scope and turn on show skin tone indicator. Find the orange region between yellow and red. That's where 20 to 40 falls. With this setup, you can instantly see whether your skin tones are in the right range and make corrections in real time. No more second guessing. If you wanna try this tool for yourself, it's available in the description below. It's affordable because I don't believe in gatekeeping. I wanna make skin tone corrections easier for everyone. Now, if you found this useful, drop a comment and let me know how you use it in your workflow. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. And if you're serious about leveling up your color grading, check out this next video where I break down even more color grading techniques that you need to know. Peace.